Hey guys, and welcome to week two of Animal Sciences 207. This week we are going to be talking about senses and anatomy. So let's start with the senses. Senses function to communicate information about an animal's environment to its brain so it may adjust its behaviors and actions to respond to whatever is going on around it. As you can imagine, senses are critical to an animal's survival and understanding animal senses can help us better understand how they experience the world. Our learning objectives for this week are as follows. We want to understand how animal body structures relate to their function, know the basic functions of each body system, understand how body systems work together with the senses, understand how animal senses function as adaptations to their environment, and compare the special senses of companion animals to each other as well as to humans. And then we also want to be able to explain the similarities and differences between dentition patterns of companion animals. You need to be able to differentiate which dentition pattern indicates an herbivorous, carnivorous, or an omnivorous diet. In general, each of the species we discuss will have the basic five senses. Vision, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. Now, scientists speculate we actually have many more senses, including the sense of a body in space, the sense of time passing, etc. However, for time's sake, we will stick to the big five in this course, and we will briefly touch on some of the extra senses. Each species has its own variation of each sense. They are each specialized for the environment the animal evolved in and the role that animal played within its environment. Ambush predators often have excellent vision and depth perception so that they can see prey movements close to them, while prey species often have a large field of vision to scan the horizon for predators. Most animals have somewhat overlapping sensory abilities with specializations based on their environment and role within it. Since each animal has different abilities within each sense, it is hard to rank them. Humans are better at seeing color, but cats are better at seeing movement. So who has the better sense of vision? It's hard to say. And while dogs have long been regarded as some of the strongest sniffers in the animal kingdom, people are actually better than dogs at detecting odors commonly found in fruits and flowers. Animals will use the same sense for a wildly different task. We will go through each of the senses and we will talk about animals which have a pretty cool adaptation for that sense. We're going to start off with vision. Vision is extremely important to people, therefore we see very well compared to other animals. Vision is often rated as the most valued sense when people are surveyed. Birds also have some of the best vision in the animal kingdom, far surpassing even humans. Vision is specialized to the time of day animals are most active, with the light levels and qualities of their environment, whether the animal was a hunter or prey animal, whether or not the animal needed to see color for finding food, mates, etc. Some animals can see in spectrums of light invisible to us while others probably only see a gray blur. The size of the eye in a species can often tell you how important vision is to them. The larger the eye, the larger the camera, so to speak. Here's something interesting. Due to the way light is filtered through the eye, the image projected onto your retina is actually upside down. Your brain reverses this image so that you see the world at the correct orientation. As you can imagine, this is a pretty complex process. A large portion of the brain must be dedicated solely to visual information processing in species who have highly developed vision. Your brain has to process colors, movements, distances, textures, and this all must be done instantaneously for you to be able to react. This is one reason some animals do not see very well. It takes a lot of work to see, and if it is not absolutely necessary for survival, think of animals who live in caves or underground. Animals won't evolve excellent vision. It just takes up too much cranial real estate and processing power. So let's look at a canine eye. Most animals have the same basic components which are modified based on how they evolved. So while the shape and size of certain structures differ and some structures are unique to certain kinds of animals, the basic components are going to be the same. 
The integumentary system provides some protective structures for the eye. The eyelids, eyelashes, and eyebrows or whiskers around the eye all function to help protect it. The lacrimal glands within the skin produce tears for lubrication. Essentially, the eye itself functions as a camera. Light first enters through the cornea, which focuses the light into the rest of the eye. The iris contains muscles to control the amount of light filtering through the pupil. passes through the pupil, it is focused further through the lens. The lens is largely what allows us to be able to focus on specific objects. The resulting image is then projected onto the retina, a thin, light-sensitive membrane on the back side of the eye. The retina is where the rods and cones are located. Rods and cones are the cells which help us see color and light. Rods are light sensitive and cones are color sensitive. Just remember that cones are for color. Once a rod detects light or a cone detects color, it will relay that information as electromagnetic impulses down to the nerve cells attached to them. These nerve cells then relay that information to the optic nerve. The optic nerve sends the information to the visual cortex. This is the part of our brain that is responsible for making sense of what we see. Here we see a diagram of human eye muscles. The musculoskeletal system provides the protective bone of the eye socket and the muscles with which the eye is moved. Some animals can turn their eyes better than others. Since birds fly, they must be as light as possible. Vision is exceptionally important to them, so they have evolved to have reduced muscles to turn their eyes. The weight saved from those muscles allow their actual eye to be larger. Those fluid-filled orbs are pretty heavy. So that is why birds can turn their heads so far around. Their eyes cannot move all that much. Skull type plays a large role in the visual field of an animal. When we talk about the skull, we will be referencing the cephalic index. So what is the cephalic index? Well, this word cephalic comes from a Latin word meaning head. The cephalic index is the ratio of the widest part of the skull of an organism multiplied by 100 divided by its maximum length. So the larger the number, the shorter the face. Let's use dogs as an example since they exhibit all three skull types to extremes compared to other species. The index is broken into three main shapes. The leucocephalic animals have the lowest index numbers, such as this saluki here on the left. These animals have very long skulls. Usually these animals evolved to be very fast and they have a very wide visual field. Mesatocephalic animals have a moderate head type that is rather square, like the golden retriever in the middle. These animals have a moderate visual field and they are good at carrying things in their mouths. Their, jaw their jaws, which are shorter than a saluki's, are also stronger than a saluki's, but they are longer than a boxer's. Help. This extra length helps enable the dog to have enough room in its jaw to easily carry something. Well, you can imagine a boxer might have a little bit more difficulty carrying a bird than a golden retriever. A boxer is an example of a brachycephalic dog. Brachycephalic animals have very short faces. Here you can see how the different skull types affect the bones and teeth placement. Short-faced animals have forward-set eyes with greater overlapping vision between each eye. This is known as binocular vision, or seeing the same thing with both eyes. Binocular vision allows for greater depth perception and close-range vision. Short faces also confer great jaw strength. Animals who needed to excel at close-range hunting or fighting, such as bulldogs, often have shorter faces. Cats have shorter faces as well, giving them greater binocular vision and exceptional jaw strength for their size. Due to the shape of their skull, cats can also open their mouths very, very wide. Binocular vision, while offering some serious perks, has the serious downside of reducing the overall visual field. 
It also reduces the room in the skull for tissues used to detect scents and it reduces the capacity to take in a lot of air quickly. Many animals with long snouts prioritize scent and efficient respiration over vision. Longer faced animals with eyes set more on the sides of their heads have a much wider field of vision, but they sacrifice some depth perception and jaw power. These animals are usually able to better detect movement far away in a wider field. Large prey animals like horses have this skull type and so do dogs who hunt primarily by spotting movement, otherwise known as sight hounds. Most animals have evolved their eyes on the sides of their head, like guinea pigs, rabbits, most reptiles, many fish, many birds, etc. A wider field of vision and a better sense of smell seem to be preferable to visual clarity in many species. Here are some examples of avian visual fields. As you can see, the pigeon with eyes set on either side of the head have a much larger visual field. They also have a much smaller proportion of their visual field devoted to binocular vision compared to the owl, which have eyes set on the front of their head. As prey, pigeons need to be able to scan for movement more than they need to be able to see well directly in front of them. As predators of small animals, owls need good depth perception to be able to swoop in and snag their prey. Most animals are also adapted to prioritize visualizing movement over visualizing color. Both predator and prey need to be able to see movement. Many domesticated animals are adapted to being active at dawn and dusk. This is known as crepuscular. Crepuscular animals include cats, rabbits, rats, mice, and dogs. These animals can become more habituated to a diurnal lifestyle, but their wild cousins are crepuscular. Some companion animals are largely active at night, or they are nocturnal. These can include some reptiles, chinchillas, some amphibians, and some arachnids. These animals do not need to see in excellent color, since at nighttime there is not often enough light to see color by. Diurnal animals, or those who are active during the day, are the only animals who even have the opportunity to see in full color. Humans and most birds are diurnal. Most animals do not see color as well as humans and birds do. Cats, dogs, rabbits, and many other animals see the world in muted tones. They probably do see some colors, so it isn't all shades of gray. So why did humans and birds evolve such good color vision? Well, they needed to have it to find food. Many birds and primates rely on eating ripe fruits and vegetables. Birds like the hummingbird need to see flowers. So having good color vision is essential to spotting these foods. Being able to see a ripe fruit is faster than having to sniff each one to know if it is ripe. In fact, humans prioritize plant colors above all others. Greens are some of the colors that we can best differentiate. There are entire spectrums of light our eyes have lost the ability to see. So we've sacrificed our ability to see many colors in order to see a few colors very well. So what causes some animals to have those glowing eyes in photographs? They have a tapetum lucidum, or a structure in their eyes which reflects light back out through the front of the eye, allowing it to be absorbed again. This tissue is what causes the glowing eyes you often see when trying to photograph your cat or dog. Dogs, cats, and horses have this structure. The structure is very useful for animals which are crepuscular or nocturnal. Many of our companion species can see UV light, including dogs, cats, rodents, fish, some reptiles, and some amphibians. This ability may be one of the reasons for your pet staring at a seemingly empty space or when your cat acts like there is a ghost in the room. So why did this develop? Well, being able to see UV light gives animals a serious advantage. Let's use birds as an example. Rodent urine contains chemicals which reflects UV rays, so a bird of prey could see urine trails while hunting. 
Some insects are easier to see in the UV spectrum than in the spectrum of light visible to humans. This is also true of some seeds and fruits, so UV vision helps animals find food. Color is very important to messaging between birds. They use color for mating displays and communication. So being able to see UV allows birds to have a whole other range of colors to use in signaling. Ultraviolet is not the only special spectrum some of our companions can use. Many snakes have the ability to sense infrared light through pits on their face. Infrared radiation is emitted from warm things like a little mouse body. So even in pitch darkness, a snake could still see them. They do not see this radiation through their eyes, however. They have special pits on the side of their faces that use special proteins to detect infrared. Snakes are not the only animals who can see with parts of their body other than their eyes. Some amphibians can detect light through their skin and they can even regenerate parts of their eye if it is damaged. So that's it for vision. Next we'll move on to scent and you guys will watch a video before we come back and get together again for a discussion.